Good evening, wonderful people of God. Welcome to the man of God. You are in the prophetic visitation with the man of God. Today I want to thank God for you and for all of you that are listening. Um, tonight I will be praying for you. I want you to know that God is still in control. And thank God for his merciful hands and his gracious hands towards us. Thank you one more time to tune in and the prophetic visitation. Tonight I will be praying for you and I know that God will touch you and heal your broken body. Be encouraged, be not dismayed. This is not the hour to be dismayed, but this is the hour to praise God. Thank God for all the things that's supposed to happen, that God of reverse is God and is God by himself. Thank God that we pray for the Caribbean, Jamaica, and I believe that God is turning back that storm, that hurricane, because God is able. Um, I mean, before it came, I pray that God will turn it back. So I believe God is going to turn back that hurricane. I ain't worrying about it. All things is in the hands of God. But tonight, I want you to know that we are praying for Jamaica. And not only Jamaica, but we are praying for the whole world. But we definitely lifting up the island of the Caribbean, Jamaica, before God. And I believe that God is protecting that island. Because the church pray. Ladies and gentlemen, can you believe it? When the church leave this earth realm, it's going to be a chaos. It's going to be so much problem. Because without the church pray and hold back stuff, nothing can happen. Let me tell you, it's praying folks that praying right now that there will not be that the the, the hurricane will not hit the island of Jamaica. It's praying folks that praying across the world right now that God is reversing these things. Think about when the church leave. Who gonna pray for you? Who gonna pray for the world when the church leave? Because one day the church gotta leave. The church is going to leave. The Bible said the church will caught up to meet Jesus in the twinkling of an eye. The rapture. And when the church leave. Then the chaos. Begin. I don't know. Somebody said they have no sound. I think you got sound. I don't know. But um, when the church leave. There is going to be chaos. In the earth realm. I know you can hear me. There is going to be chaos in the earth realm. When the church leave. So today ladies and gentlemen. We are praying for the Caribbean Jamaica. We are praying for the world. But I want to tell you. Are you going to be. In that group. When the church. Leave this earth realm. Are you going to be one of those. Saint. Glory be to God. You must be one of those saint. Because the Bible said. When the church leave, there's going to be rumors of war, earthquake in diverse place. Uh, you don't see nothing yet. When the church leave, that's going to be problem. If you think you see problem, wait until the church of God leave this earth realm. Thank God that I'm in the church. Thank God I'm part of the church. Thank God that I'm a part of the church. Are you a part of the church today? Are you playing church? Are you joking with your spiritual life? Are you believe that this is just a delusion? People just talking stuff? Don't you believe that Jesus is coming back? Don't you see the sign of the time? Don't you see what's happening across the world? Don't you believe that 
there come a day when there, your grandma won't be here to pray for you. The pastor won't here to be here to pray for you. The bishop won't be here to pray for you. There come a day that the church of the living God will be caught up out of this earth realm. And when the church leave, that's the beginning of crisis. Think about it. Hurricane, tornado, all these things hitting. And the church is not here to pray to hold it back. Hallelujah. Many folks don't believe that. They don't believe that. They believe that is, is just mother nature. Then when the church leave, you will see if it's just mother nature. Because a lot of people just believe in mother nature and they don't believe in God. Hallelujah. Some people trust in their wealth, their money. I tell you the day come, ladies and gentlemen. Now we'll be praying for some folks tonight, but the day come that none of these things won't mean nothing. None of these Millionaire, billionaire, trillionaire, whatever you call them. This won't mean nothing to us. It won't mean nothing because the church of the living God will be taken out of this earth realm. Can you believe it? When there is no more peace in the community, believe it. Eh? When there is no more peace between the police and the community, no more leader. That's going to step up and say peace. Everybody in the earth realm is going to say violence. Because the Bible said in the dark ages in the book of Revelation. That man will wish to die and can die. For five months man will wish to die and can die. Go in the high building. Jump off. Your spirit will not leave your body. And man will be tormented for five months. Glory be to God. The Bible said in the book of Revelation. That God shall pour out his, his, his veil and the, the blood. The, 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 the pestilence that he's going to pour out in the last days. When the sea shall turn into blood. And these things shall, the sea shall turn into blood and dried up and all the wrath of God shall pour out in man. In the book of Revelation. How are you going to be here in the midst of that chaos? In the midst of that. Listen, people fear right now. Think about it. So many folks are so fearful right now. Think about when the church of the living God leave. You think you see fear yet? No, 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 no. The Bible said man art is going to fail them. That's how much they're going to fear. The Lord Jesus. Are you going to be here? Are you going to be here? Oh, prophecy shall cease. No more prophecy. There are going to be a few preachers that are going to be here. But they are going to be preaching the kingdom of God. And they are going to have the mark of God in them. The Bible said they have a mark in their forehead of God. They will have the mark of God in them. And they will be preaching in the great tribulation. But they can't do them nothing. Even if they kill them, they're going to resurrect again. But you, they're going to harm you. The Bible said that if you don't want to take the mark of the beast, they're going to cut your hands off. If you reject the mark of the beast, you're going to go through suffering. Because when the mark of the beast come around, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible said without the mark, you won't be able to buy. You won't be able to sell. You won't be able to do nothing. You won't be able to travel. It will be a one real harder system and government. Hallelujah. 
one royal order system and government. And when the mark of the beast coming, is either you take it or you reject it. If you reject it, they're going to make you go through a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. You think this, you think you ever been through pain. When the mark of the beast come around, they will even cut off one of your hands and see you bleeding. And then they're going to cut off the next one and you will be bleeding. And then, they, a matter of fact, they're going to start with your finger and they cut off your finger. Then they cut off your hands. They're going to cut you up like a meat, believe it or not. When the mark of the beast come around, anybody that reject the mark of the beast will die. Glory be to God. But the church not supposed to be here. The church supposed to be gone. So all of you that are playing church, you ain't going nowhere. And you know what that going to mean? The royal system... The one world order, the one world system that will be coming around. In the great tribulation, if he is a church player and a church goer, when the mark of the beast come around, you're going to run to church. Ain't nobody going to be there. You're going to call my phone. Ain't nobody going to answer. You're going to... Look for my P.O. box to write me and text me. I'm not going to be here. So, when the mark of the beast come around, ladies and gentlemen, the church supposed to be leaving. Supposed to leave before the mark of the beast come. So Jesus said, these are the beginning of crisis. What we are seeing is not a coincidence. It, it, it's, these things must happen. Because what God is getting ready to do is to take his church out of the earth realm. But his church will go through a test or a period of test that is called tribulation. Not the great tribulation. By the great tribulation come around, the church supposed to be gone. Hallelujah. But all of those people that play in church... All of those people that you've been preaching to, that come and listen to you day by day, and said, hey, you are a clown, you're just talking nonsense, I don't want to hear you. I tell you the day come, that is going to be too late for some people. Think about it. People go through a little suffering now. They ready to kill themselves. They ready to jump off building they ready to take a gun and shoot yourself they ready to do all kind of retarded stuff and when the mark of the beast come around the bible said man is going to wish to die five months and can't die and you know what's going to happen the beast of the field will become your enemies glory be to god the lion, even the dogs, all of these things will become your enemies. The Bible said that there are going to be um, actually these beasts that's going to sting like serpent. And man going to try to kill them and can't kill them because they will have on a shield, a protection. And the Bible said that the heaven shall seize like brass no word from heaven no crying out to God you can moan all night heaven is sealed heaven is sealed you can lift up your hands and say Jesus help me heaven is sealed heaven will seal like brass that means there will be no word from heaven but those prophets that God sent to preach in the last days. And they will preach the kingdom of God. That mean the day come 
that grace door shall be closed. You know what that means? The grace period is going to be closed. Now we are saved by grace. And by grace we are redeemed. And by grace God help us. And by grace God give us his grace even when we sin. His favor that we don't deserve it. But the day come that there will be no grace. The door of grace shut. Hallelujah. And when that grace door shut, the those prophet will be preaching the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And they will kill those prophet. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Good night, evangelists. God bless you, all of you that are listening. They will kill those prophets. But the Bible said that after the third day, those prophets is going to resurrect. Remember, Jesus, Jesus died and on the third day he resurrect. So those prophets will really die. They will die in the street. Because the wicked man will, will kill them. That is the Antichrist that Satan is going to enter into that man and he will be the Antichrist. And they will kill those prophets. But on the third day those prophets will re resurrect or rise again and preach the kingdom of God. The Bible said in those days people going to hate God. You think folks ate God yet? In those days, people is going to hate God. Because God wrought is going to pour out in the nation. Those days, if you said Jesus, people hate you right now. But in those last days, the Bible said that, remember, they won't have nothing to drink. The water will turn, actually, the water will dry up and turn into blood. Those days, the sea will turn into blood. It talk about the red horse, the pale horse, and the white horse, the Antichrist. Um, it talk about there are going to be famine. So the tree, they ain't going to give no fruit, no food, none of that. And he's going to talk, he talk about the red one, the blood is shed. You don't see nothing yet. And, and you got to understand that the, 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 the chib, we go through the tribulation period. The tribulation period is three and a half year. The great tribulation, if you break it down, is actually three and a half year. Why the Jews they are the one that's supposed to go through the great tribulation. It, it, it is seven years in total, but the Jews are the one that's supposed to go through the great tribulation because they reject Christ. They reject the Lord. But because the Gentile didn't accept Jesus, they're going to be going through it because the door of grace will close. So right now we are going through tribulation. But it's not the great tribulation because God is about to take his bride before the great tribulation. He's about to take his people before the great tribulation. So we will not be here in the great tribulation, ladies and gentlemen. So no prophet will be here but those prophets that preach in the kingdom. Why they preach in the kingdom? We are preaching grace because we are saved by grace and grace is freely given now. But the day when the grace period is closed, that is in the great tribulation, they will be preaching the kingdom because God will be coming to establish his kingdom and earth. Glory be to God. Are you going to be one of them that in the kingdom of God 
in, in, in the group of the saint. Don't miss out in heaven. Don't miss out in heaven for nothing. Because ladies and gentlemen, it don't worth it. <laughs> it really don't worth it. It don't worth it. it it's all about God. And in that great tribulation, you don't want to be here. See people is crying, so much stuff going on, going through all kind of stuff now. And they saying, man of God, I'm, I'm sick of life. But when the great tribulation come around, that time you're going to be sick. Because the church will be gone. Nobody to pray for the White House. Nobody to pray for Congress. Nobody to pray for the Senator. Nobody to pray for community, for a peace in the community. Nobody to pray to give you a word of encouragement in those days. It's going to be terrifying. It's going to be terrifying. I don't want to be here. In the great tribulation. Ladies and gentlemen. If you really want me to pray for you. Because I'm talking to you. I can feel the fire of God burning in my heart. Hallelujah. Um, if you want me to pray for you. You, 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 you see the number and the screen. You can call in. I pray for you. If you are right. You don't need no prior, then you don't have to call in. But the number is on the screen, I think is the number is four eight four eight nine six two six four six. Um but we are living in the last days. And if you can't see, if you're waiting for the next five years. To get it right with God. Don't wait. Because Jesus can come tonight. 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 If you need me to pray for you. I pray for you. I won't be prophesied in tonight. God is saying all ye that every labor. And every lead. Come into me. And I give you rest. Is rest past all understanding? Thank you. <phone rings> Call you alive. Hello. God bless you. Where are you calling from? Yes, I'm calling for can you prayer. Can you please turn me down in the back? Yes, hold on a second. I'm calling from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. All right. What may I pray for you about? Um, for direction. Okay. What's your name? Trevette Barrett. Okay. Heavenly God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus. Father God, your daughter of calling tonight, you know, her situation. You know, God, she need direction right now, direction. Yes, she Lord. need you to show her the right way. And yes, I ask Lord. you now, Father God, that you increase her knowledge. Yes, Give her wisdom, understanding. Yes. Yes, Lord yes. God, I pray that you open her eyes yes, and make her wise in this time. Let she discern the time and yes. the days that we are living in. Yes. Let she have understanding like the son of Ezekiel. Yes. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. you know all things. Yes, and all things are possible with you. Yes. And some things are possible with man. And as she asks you tonight for you to show her the right part, 
she's asking you in faith. And anything that we ask in faith, God, it shall be done. Thank you, Jesus. I pray tonight that you increase her. Yes, Lord, let her know you. Give her vision, dream <laughs> in this time. Break the yoke of darkness from over her life. Thank you, Jesus. Give her the strength to endure. So many things are in the world today. Hallelujah. But with your power, there is nothing too hard. And by your power, Jesus Christ, the resurrection of my soul. Hallelujah. I command you to direct, to lead, to protect, to shield, to cover to guide, to groom yes, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Give her the yes, ability, the capability, yes, and give yes, her your word and her yes, inner spirit yes, that yes, she might overcome her yes, weakness. Yes. I bind every weakness in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I release her by yes, the blood by the spirit and by your present release her now father in your hands heaven sounding sweeter all the time hallelujah I see a door open in the heaven realm and God is touching your mind Mm, yes, Lord, Be encouraged. The yes. best is yet to come. You are in the mind of God. Yes, and you are in the will of God. Yes. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. And God keep bless you, you. Too. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. I want to tell you tonight. <laughs> you are in the will of God. You are in the mind of God. God love you. But do you love yourself enough to let God take care of you? Because all things are possible with God. And nothing is impossible with God. And whatever you're in your life, it seemed like you can't manage it. Give it to God. Whatever in your life. Seems like you can't control it. Give it to God. Whatever in your life. It seems like it's burning you down. Give it to God. Tonight. I want you to pray with me. And I want you to pray this prayer. With me. Jesus. You said in your word. That all ye that every labor. And every lady. Come unto you. And you will give them rest. Lord God we have come unto you. And we ask you, God, for your rest tonight. Whatever are burning us down, whatever let us feel like we can make it. Father God, tonight we give it to you. And we put our hands up to say we surrender our will, our way. The things we like. The things we love. We surrender it to you tonight. And we said father. Take us. As we are. Use us. For your glory. Lord God. Give us. A makeover. 
make our heart over make our mind over make our soul over make our spirit man over whatever that we believe that is impossible for you we rebuke that spirit and we said all things are possible with you. And Father God, we thank you tonight. That you have washed us from our sin. And our trespasses. And so now. We command our will. In your hands. And said use us. Mold us. Make us over. We don't want to miss heaven. Use us God. For your. Purpose. Strengthen those that are weak. Those that have not confessed their sin. Let they surrender tonight. And said Lord. I confess. My sin. And if you confess your sin to God tonight. You that are listening to me. Because some of you are still sinners. If you confess your sin. Find a church. Baptize in the name of Jesus. Walk a holy and a godly life. And you will make it to heaven. You that are not married. If you can't contain, find a wife, find a husband. But walk holy. You can't miss heaven. Can't miss heaven. God bless you. I love you. But Jesus love you more. Because I didn't die for you. And case, I didn't die for you. And I don't have the gut to die for you. But Jesus died for you. That means God love you. Before the foundation of the hurt. And because God love you. Don't die in your sin. Don't die in your sin. The wages of sin is death. Gift of God is eternal life. I have one more thing to say. Jesus met the rich man. Jesus said to him. Said. What shall I do. The young man. To. Inherit. Eternal life. And Jesus. Said to him. You know, you, you got to keep the commandment. Love thy neighbors. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Love thy neighbors. You love yourself. Do not covet, cover your neighbor wife. Do not bear false witness and all of these things. And then Jesus said to him, Go and sell all that you have and give it to the poor and follow me and you shall have eternal life in the kingdom of everlasting and you shall have treasure in that place and the rich young man turn his head and bow his head and walk away. And Jesus said. It's hard for a rich man. To enter into the kingdom of heaven. And the disciple was astonished. And they said. Who shall. Make it into heaven then. Jesus. They was astonished. No they was astonished. And then Jesus said. It's hard. For the rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven is easier for 
a camel to go through the heart, the eyes of a needle than a rich man to make it into the kingdom of heaven. And they was more astonished. And they said, who shall make it into the kingdom of God? And God said, some things are possible with man, but all things are possible with God. The love of money. Do not let this thing carry you away. It carry many young folks, many young people away. It carry young lady from being young lady to stripper, from being stripper to prostitute. It carry young man away from being a decent young man to be a drugs dealer. The love of money. Do not let this thing carry you away. The love of money is the root of all evil. I am not saying you must not have money. It's not what I'm saying. See many young lady leave God. Many young men leave God. Because they couldn't get everything that they want and went to go back to drugs went back to selling their body and doing all kind of stuff and you know the end of it is that they didn't make it back they did not make it back they did not make it back ladies and gentlemen they did not make it back many musician it was playing for God and playing for the devil at the same time and one car accident and that was it and and many folks preached them to heaven said they gone to heaven but I know better that they're not in heaven. You know where you're going before you die. You know if you're going to heaven or you go going to hell. Because you will see the angel of the Lord will come for you when you're going to die or the angel of darkness. And many folks said, I'm ready to go to heaven because they know where they're going. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you really ready? I don't think I'm ready. I think I'm getting ready. I tell you, I don't think I'm ready. I still have some stuff need to come out of me. I still have problem. So if Jesus showed up tonight, would I go to heaven? Maybe yes, but maybe not. Because there is still stuff that I Gotta get rid of daily. And let me tell you, God is not a fool. God is not a clown. God know everything that you are hidden in the secret place. And the secret place is not your house. The secret place is not your bedroom. The secret is your heart. David said, I word I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Say so if you got negative things in your heart and your heart is not right, then that's the secret place. Many folks said, said in the secret place, 
shall I abide. But if you don't have a clean heart, you cannot abide in the secret place of the Most High or under the shadow of the Almighty. A clean heart and a pure hands, those persons can abide in the secret place. So I, David said, Restore in me a right spirit and a clean heart. God got to restore that. And when God give you that new heart, that new spirit, then you can abide in the secret place. You can't abide in the secret place if you hate your brother. If you jealous your neighbor, if you jealous your sister, if you jealous your father, if you hate your pastor, if you hate your teacher, you ain't in the secret place. Because the secret place is your heart. That's why God said, David is a man of my own heart. Because God look at the heart. The heart is desperate, wicked, above all things. The only we can clean our face, we can clean our body, we can clean our feet, we can clean our eyes, we can clean our hands, we can wash our head. But we cannot clean our heart without God. Cleanse your heart. You cannot get to it. But something can get to your heart. Is the word of God. And that's the thing that's going to purify your heart. The word mixed with faith. And the resurrection blood of Jesus Christ. Is your heart right? We preaching. We are teaching. We are evangelizing. But is your heart right with God? You know I get up this morning. And I lay down. All day before God. And I said I ain't coming up. Until I receive power. Because. The only thing going to keep you. Your heart got a right. But if you don't have no power. You cannot be kept. You cannot be kept. If I'm a preacher. Of the gospel. And I got to be fighting daily. And I have an anointing and my life. And I got to fight daily to live right. What about those folks that don't spend no time in this present? You can't be kept. You cannot be kept. You got to go back to glory. You see, the Bible said in the day of Pentecost, and I'm getting out of here, the apostle, they was up in the upper room waiting for the and do of the power of the Holy Ghost. Let me show you something. They did not move until they received power. And many times, we go to pray and we pray five minutes. Thank you, Jesus. He is good. He is marvelous. And we move on. Five minutes prior can't keep you. Probably in Paul and Silas days. But in these days, five minutes won't keep won't keep you 
Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. That won't keep you. You got to go down. You got to stay down. You got to pray. You, you got to even read the Bible all day. The word of God got to soak. Hallelujah. Not sprinkle. You know. You sprinkle a garden or something. The Catholic they would sprinkle you. It got to soak in your soul. Your spirit. For you to live right. If it don't soak in your spirit. And in your heart. You can't live right. You can live right. You go to church. You will jump around the church. Shout. Come home. Back to the mess. That you still. Have in the secret. The word of God. Got to be in your heart. You know many folks. Go into church. And it happened to me. Sometimes I'm being. Real. And we, we shout, we jump, we, we, we skip. But when it come to reality and facing the demonic, demonic, demons, forces behind the scene, can you stand against those forces? Because you got somebody in church to jump with you, to praise with you, to cover you. But the real thing is when you step behind those walls. Can you? Can you stand against the power of darkness? Can you reject your own loss? That's the real thing. Can you reject when the devil is speaking to you? That's the real thing. The real thing is not in church. We all have people in church to cover our back. The real thing. Or the real stuff. It's when you got to face it by yourself. Once Jesus was with the disciple, they feel all powerful. Once they was with Jesus, Jesus have company, but Jesus didn't put the, his trust in them. When it get to Gethsemane, it's totally different. And let me tell you, this Christian walk is going to take a Gethsemane cry to get power to endure the stuff that are ahead of us. Jesus pray until his sweat become drip of blood. It's going to take a Gethsemane prior. We don't even pray no more. When you see the church call and said, let us go and a fast in two weeks, close down, no food, no water, just pray. No, no, no. We got big conference. We got con convention we got big concert just jump praise skip dance and come back to your mess preach like you the best preacher but you're still coming back to your mess teach like you are a teacher but you're still coming back to your mess. Preach like an apostle. 
still coming back to your mess. Because you have no substance. Preaching is a gift. Fasting and prayer give you substance. Hallelujah. Every one of us got gift to edify the body of Christ. And I can preach and tell people cry, break down and cry, but that's just gift. That's just the gift. That's just what God gave me. It don't need repentance. But remember Jesus came down from the mountain. There was a little boy possessed with the with demons from he was young. And I'm getting out your way. I I mean it. But this little boy from he was a, was a child he possessed with demons. Listen what happened. The man take this little boy to Jesus' disciple. They could not cast out the spirit that was in that little boy. And Jesus when Jesus came down off the mountain, the man ran to Jesus and said, Jesus, I have taken this little boy to your disciple. But they could not cast out the spirit. And Jesus rebuked them and said, faithless generation. When they got into the private they asked Jesus, because Jesus got a public ministry and a private ministry. They asked Jesus, why we couldn't cast out the demons? Jesus said, because you lack faith. That's one, you doubt God. But he said, but these things only come through prior and fasting. So now we have people that possess in our church, in any church. And we plea in the blood, come out in the name of Jesus. Certain demonic forces and certain dimension do not move by the name, by just Call in the name of Jesus and plain the blood. They move by the anointing that you carry, and they only the anointing only release by fasting and prayer. Look, Jesus went out into the wilderness forty days and forty night. What did you think he go, he went out there for? He did not went out into the wilderness to prepare a sermon or to become a theologian or to be very profound or to be eloquent but he went out there to fast and pray. Glory be to God. Because he know he will have contact and he's God. But he know He's God, but he was unhurt. And while he was unhurt, he's going to be in humanity that is flesh. He's divine, but he's still going to have problem once you're in flesh. You got to let the divinity override humanity. And divinity, that is the spirit, cannot override humanity unless you go on fasting to allow divinity to override the flesh. So when Jesus went out into the wilderness, he said, listen, I'm God by myself. But I know that this flesh if I don't 
go and fasting that the spirit will subdue this flesh this flesh will have me all over you see in the last hour when God take his present from Jesus look at it he said he cry because he's going to take on the sin of the world he cry until his tears turn into blood because the flesh is saying you can't do it you won't make it and he cry until his sweat turn into drip of blood hear what the, he's asking the father now father if it is possible please he is he, he came he came Jesus came become a baby I'm telling you the way he's saying it father if it is possible please let this cup pass father if it is possible please let this cup pass with tears and the father he prayed the first time went and sees disciples sleeping he called back and said father with tears in his eyes if it is possible can you please let this cup pass father didn't answer him he went back the third time father please if it is possible let this cup pass but if it's not possible let thy will be done because he's crying because now he's going to take on the sin of the world the serpent the sin of the world that satan have make so many adam have commit sin and so many sin of in the world he's going to take it on the pressure of life is start to weigh him out start to burn him down and he said, not my will, but thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will be done. And the devil is saying, you can, Jesus, you can turn back. You don't have to do this. You can serve sin. You don't have to do this. You don't have to go through all these pain, these child, and many of us, the devil is saying to us, you don't have to do this. Because once you ain't living right, the devil don't attack you. You don't have to go through suffering. Just obey me. Just do what I tell you to do. Just live in sin. Just do the stuff of the flesh. Because the devil don't want you to make it to heaven. He don't want you to make it to heaven. So tonight is for you to ask God. Say God, not my will, but thy will be done in my life and you're going to cry because I find out I'm talking about myself I find out once I ain't living if I'm living if I'm not living right I don't get attacked by the devil but anytime I'm living right the attack of the devil start once I'm living any kind of lifestyle, I don't get attacked by the devil. But once I choose to live right, the attack comes so hard. It's so painful. It gets so challenging, a challenge on every side. And many times you can feel the pain. 
but I let you know that you are driving on the right road. When you are on the wrong road, you don't feel no pain. You don't feel nothing when you are living wrong. The, when you are living the wrong lifestyle, you don't feel nothing. God, help your people to live right. If you suffer with him, you reign with him. I'm finished. God bless you. Thank you one more time to tune in to the prophetic visitation. But I want you to go to God tonight and say, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Glory be to God. Thy will be done. Anytime I'm out, of lying with God. I don't go through no attack. Anytime I get back in line. The fire turn up. But you can't keep on going back. I don't want a new beginning. Somebody said. God is going to give me a new beginning. Keep your new beginning. You know what it mean by a new beginning? Somebody said, you're going to get a new beginning. Listen to me very carefully. When you start a new beginning, you got to start over. That means all the suffering you go through, you got to go through it again. I don't want a new beginning. I want to finish where I start from. Think about it. A new beginning it's like you're building a building. You already done the foundation. You already put up the building. And somebody's telling you. You're going to get a new beginning. You're going to start back over the building. No, no, no. That's too much work. That's too much. I don't want a new beginning. I want to build up from where I'm at. Fate to fate. Dimension to dimension. Keep your new beginning. I want God to move me. From the level that I am. To another level. Not a new beginning. You're talking about new beginning. New beginning come with homelessness. Sickness that you go through before. Pain and child, depression. You pass those stages. You don't need a new beginning. You need to begin, begin from where you leave off from. I heard preacher said, God gonna give you a new beginning. No, no, I don't want it. I want to finish from where I start. Paul didn't say. I need a new beginning. He said, I'm pressing to the mark of the I calling in Christ Jesus. Many of you is wishing for a new beginning. So every, every time you get a new beginning, you got to start from scratch. And God is saying, you don't need a new beginning. What you need God to do is elevate you from the place where you at. Now, if you are not saved, you're probably, you're going to need a new beginning. But when you are a veteran and experience so much stuff before in Christ, you don't need to start over. You need to endure. You need to go to dimension to dimension, level to level. The word apostolic actually mean, it, it really, when you summarize it, it mean warfare. So once you choose to say you are a apostolic, you got to fight warfare. 
And many folks don't understand. Once you choose that mantle, you got to go through warfare. I fight too much devil before to start over. Let me finish my race. I ain't starting over. I'm pressing to the mark of the eye calling in Christ Jesus. Think about it. You run so far. And you're willing to go back to start over? When you backslid, you got to start over. <phone rings> Carly, you alive? Okay, I can't hear you. Hello. God bless you. Is this Kellen? Yes. Uh, are you online now or not? Go ahead. Uh, can you, you got so many noise in the back. Can you please keep it down? Yes, I'm oh. online. May, oh, may I help you? Sorry about no, that. No, what happened? I'm with Marcia, Marcia friend, Michelle. Mm. And, um, but if you're online, you know, I wanted to talk to you, but if you're busy now, tell me if you can get him. So uh, this is a number I can get through to you. Yes, call me tomorrow. I'll speak to you. God bless you. Yes, all right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yes, so this is, uh, we don't want a new beginning. I'm finished. Um, God love you. God bless you. Um, and thank you all of you that calling. Just ask God to. I'm going to pray one more prayer. Lift your hands up. Jesus, wash me. Use me for your glory. Endure me with power from high. Lord God, you know the challenge that I'm going to face tomorrow. And I don't know how I can face it without you. But with you all things are possible. And now I ask you, Father, to give your, your children strength. For them to endure the challenge that they will face tomorrow. Give them your spirit and your present in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you ladies and gentlemen. Until next time, keep pressing. Keep praying. Keep your heads up. Keep your eyes in Jesus. He's coming again. Surely coming again. God love you. Until next time. Amen.